Hello and welcome back to Release Radar. I'm Chris Viscardi, and today we're talking about JavaScript on Wasm. Wasm is an absolutely huge acronym-filled topic, from ASMJS to Wasm to WASI and more. And that's only talking about the technologies and not the organizations. Wasm is short for WebAssembly, and it's designed as a portable target for many languages. Wasm implementations have shipped in Firefox, Chrome, Safari, and Edge, leaving over 90% of browsers supporting Wasm. The Wasm standard is built by the W3C, as many other standards are, and an assortment or smorgasbord of, of people who make browsers. Which brings us to the Bytecode Alliance, because we can't talk about Wasm and WASI without talking about the Bytecode Alliance and what they're doing on top of it. You can consider the Bytecode Alliance to be the implementation side that the W3C is to the spec side. In their own words, the Bytecode Alliance is committed to establishing a capable, secure platform that allows application developers and service providers to confidently run untrusted code on any infrastructure for any operating system or device. Which brings up an interesting question. Can you run WASM, WebAssembly, outside of the browser? Or not on the web? Perhaps, oddly, the answer to this is that you don't actually need to run WebAssembly on the web. It can be embedded in any engine that can run it, similar to the way that V8 allows you to run Node.js scripts with JavaScript. And that engine isn't running in a browser. Well, unless you're using Chrome and then you're using V8, but you know, details. Two of the Bytecode Alliance's projects are Wasm Time, a WebAssembly runtime for outside the browser, like we just talked about, that can be embedded in your application, and CraneLift, a highly optimized code generator focused on fast compilation. CraneLift is being used in Wasm Time, is being integrated in Firefox, and is also an experimental backend for the Rust compiler. Notably, Fastly is also in the process of refactoring their Lucid runtime to be on top of Wasm Time. Which brings us to the meat of the video, making JavaScript run faster on WebAssembly. That might sound a little bit weird, but while JavaScript has been heavily optimized over the last two decades in browsers, the same work hasn't gone into the WebAssembly runtimes, for example. As of the recording of this video, the Bytecode Alliance has announced its initiative to start working on these problems and optimizing JavaScript for runtimes that aren't browser runtimes like Wasm. This new wave of JavaScript optimization is best suited for constrained environments. These environments include places like serverless functions and places that don't include just-in-time compilation like iOS or game consoles. In my case, I work on a Jamstack meta framework called Toast, which is written in Rust and doesn't ship a JavaScript runtime, which is kind of weird for a Jamstack meta framework. What the Bytecode Alliance has done is compile the JavaScript engine to Wasm and run it with Wasm time. Shipping both Wasm time, the Wasm runtime, and the JavaScript runtime compiled to Wasm allows you to feed JavaScript into this project. For Toast, I communicate with the user's choice of Node.js implementation over Unix socket with the Rust backend. But shipping a JavaScript engine embedded in Wasm and shipped with Wasm time could lead to a better user experience and also potentially faster code, if we're to believe what the Bytecode Alliance is saying. The Bytecode Alliance achieved this not by using V8, but by using SpiderMonkey, Firefox's JavaScript engine. Now there's nothing wrong with doing this, but the problem with doing this is that it's slow, not that it's not possible. WebAssembly doesn't allow you to generate new machine code from within a Wasm instance and then run that code. So we don't get just-in-time compilation. You can only use the interpreter. In serverless function environments, this isn't technically the case. We can use just-in-time compilation, but even for bare JavaScript isolates with a stripped down raw JavaScript engine, the boot time is approximately five milliseconds. And that doesn't even include your application or any of the features that you would need to run your application. As far as isolates go, I've only ever seen them in reference to V8 where they're a class that instantiates a new isolated, that is isolate, instance of V8. Basically, if you run two isolates, they have completely separated states between them. The cold starts in serverless environments can cause developers to pack much more functionality than would otherwise be included into a single serverless function, giving more access to things like databases and other assets than is actually required. This is especially common in my experience when developers new to things like AppSync start to deploy JavaScript functions. Because if you think about GraphQL and you think about the change responses for the resolvers that you need to call, you get a cold start for each one of those if you split the functionality amongst, say, five functions. If you instead call the same function over and over, you could potentially get fewer cold starts at the expense, of course, of giving that function more code with more responsibility that has to access more of your AWS account. And of course, chained cold starts complicate the issue and that you get a cold start on the first resolver, the second resolver, and every resolver after that. But if JavaScript startup times could get fast enough, 
We wouldn't need to hide startup time with different tricks. We could just start up an instance in Microsoft. Aside from the isolation and the security benefits, the cold start time is a major source of confusion for newer JavaScript serverless developers, especially in the cases where you're chaining one Lambda to another. So this approach is very cool. I think I could use it in my Rust projects, which excites me quite a bit. And they plan to keep working on this alongside some other companies like Fastly. All of this culminates in a very promising future for JavaScript on Wasm and the speed at which we can execute it. For more and deeper information, I suggest you check out the Bytecode Alliance blog post linked in the description. And of course, this video showcased some of the great work by Lynn Clark and others.